Good morning. Uh, my name is Adoria Kurtz, and on behalf of the Development Co Corporation, I'd like you to welcome you to this launch of the 2011 Economic Development Lecture Series. I'm honored that Dr. Nancy Zimfer is with us today and will be our keynote speaker. I can think of no better topic for our first event than education as an economic engine, nor a more appropriate and dynamic speaker than Dr. Zimfer. The Development Corporation is delighted to be working with Clinton Community College to help bring economic development issues to the forefront and to begin a community dialogue uh, about these important issues facing New York's economy. Dr. Richard Grant, who couldn't be with us this morning, and his colleagues on the TDC Education Committee, which includes John Jablonski, believe that TDC's collaboration with Clinton Community College is a good example of the type of regional public-private partnerships that the Cuomo administration is encouraging statewide and the type of community-based activity that TDC has long been involved with and will continue to focus on in the future. So without further ado, uh, I'd like now to ask John Jablonski to, uh, to uh, come and to uh, introduce our distinguished speaker. Thank you, Adore. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am John Jablonski, the president uh, of Clinton Community College. And before I do the introduction of our featured guest today, let me uh, also recognize a few uh, special guests that we have seated in the audience today. Um, representing Congressman Bill Owens, I'd like to introduce uh, Molly Ryan. Please wave or stand and be recognized. Thank you, Molly, for being here, and uh, our best to the Congressman. From the, uh, representing the 114th Assembly District, I'm very pleased that uh, here in person is Janet Dupree. There she is. Janet, thank you for being here this morning. And it's okay to clap. Uh, she's, a, she's a great... A great supporter of uh, not only Clinton Community College, but uh, the whole North Country region here. And thank you again, Janet, for being here. Uh, President of the North Country Plattsburgh Chamber of Commerce, Gary Douglas, uh, is here today. Gary, thank you for all you do. Uh, sitting in or standing in for uh, the town supervisor in Plattsburgh, who is Bernie Bassett, uh, not able to be here today. But, but uh, with us is the deputy uh, town Supervisor from the Town of Plattsburgh, Marty Mannix. And Marty, thank you for being here. Uh, several, many of our uh, Clinton Community College Board of Trustees is here today, and I will go through, uh, I think, who, who is the, the complete list of attendants, and I would ask you to please stand and be recognized as a group. The Chair of our Trustees is Nina Coolidge, the Vice Chair Bill Morgan, please stand. Uh, Mark Letta is here, Rob Gordon, our Student Trustee, and did anyone walk in after I completed the list? Then please recognize our, our trustees. I think we have a few members of the foundation board of directors here today. If uh, I'm correct, would those uh, foundation board members please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Aaron Hines and uh, 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 Bob Parks from the Press Republican newspaper. Ron Marino is the chair and uh, has not arrived yet. Uh, and saving uh, some of the most important people today uh, for the last part of this, you already have met and heard from Adoree Flynn Kurtz uh, from uh, the president of the Development Corporation. Also here representing uh, in a leadership role of the Development Corporation is Don Dooley. Don is the chairman of the board of the Development Corporation. Don, we're so happy that you're able to be with us today. Uh, I have said it before and I'll say it again, uh, those are some very special guests here today, but really everyone who's here in the room is special because you are all our partners in economic development and the work that we're all doing together to improve the quality of life here. You'll hear much more about that in just a little while. Let me though uh, fulfill my formal responsibility today and introduce our distinguished featured speaker today. Uh, on June 1st, 2009, coincidentally, the first day of my tenure as president of Clinton Community College. I love that brush with greatness that uh, the, the chancellor and I started at the same uh, exact date. On June 1st, 2009, Nancy Zimfer became the 12th chancellor of the State University of New York, the nation's largest comprehensive higher education system. State University of New York is the nation's largest comprehensive system of higher education. 
Nancy Zimfer started her work at SUNY by initiating a system-wide strategic plan. The plan, which was launched in April 2010, is focused on harnessing SUNY as an economic engine and a catalyst for enhanced quality of life for all New Yorkers. Since then, she has crisscrossed the state and the nation to bring together partners to maximize the State University's unique resources. A passionate and articulate champion of education's transformative power, she is dedicated to building on SUNY's success while developing new models to navigate challenges and leverage emerging opportunities. She plays a leadership role, and I love the fact that the Chancellor is a great role model for those of us who aspire to leadership. She plays a leadership role in numerous state and national education organizations and is a national leader in the area of teacher preparation, urban education, and university community engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to welcome back to Clinton Community College, and I ask you to help me welcome back our Chancellor, Nancy Zimper. Hi, everybody. Thank you. I'm, I'm just delighted to be here. I, I'm, I'm so pleased to be reminded that we started together. And I was trying to remember what day it was that we came to visit Clinton Community College, uh, but you hadn't had long enough to, to be able to answer as facilely as a long-serving president could the questions I am asking and of course I don't even know where I am most of the time that summer but we really uh, hit it off and you are so privileged to have John Jablonski as your leader and uh, I was privileged to be here at his inauguration so I think uh, we're in this together you are a fine leader and I am learning a lot from your enthusiasm and commitment John so thank you, thank you. This is uh, a tremendous opportunity, and I am very grateful, uh, Adori, for the co-sponsorship here and the commitment of your organization and your leadership and all uh, elected officials and dignitaries, uh, all of whom you are. I've met a number of you on several occasions, and I'm actually beginning to, I'm not saying that if we were in the grocery store, I would know. Uh, but it really feels very, very comfortable to me. And uh, this is an important and interesting date for a couple of reasons. First of all, this is our second trip to Plattsburgh in February, just to prove it can be done to all those naysayers. Second, this is the date uh, on 2009 uh, of which I was requested to meet with then Governor Patterson. Uh, as you may know, the SUNY Board of Trustees has the authority to appoint a chancellor. But it really works a lot better if the chancellor candidate also visits with the governor and it was very clear to me if we didn't hit it off I would not be standing here today and from that day forward I have done nothing but think about the future of the State University of New York and its role in promoting this great state so I believe uh, to the core in the things we're going to talk about together today. And uh, we have subsequently been back for John's uh, inaugural and uh, intend to just keep on coming. The thing I like about the visit we paid last year during the course of our strategic planning is that we assigned a topic to each of the state sites we visited. We brought a couple hundred people here to have a conversation. And the topic was about the vibrant community. And I love the ability of this community to make the case for its vibrancy, which went something like you can ski in the morning on the beautiful mountains uh, slightly across the border. You can go north to another country and have dinner and still come home and be comfortable in your own bed at night. This is a vibrant community. So you've got a lot going for you. And I'm here to say how this all connects with what we're trying to do at the State University of New York. So um, I start with a value proposition. I mean, I am a faculty member. I'm a professor. At my heart of hearts, I, I need to sort of have a framework for how I could how I can think about the role SUNY can play. And I just grabbed a few of the things I've been reading, but the big point of this picture, and I brought lots of pictures just to keep everybody engaged here, um, is the concept given to the notion of an anchor institution. What is an anchor institution? And it is, by definition, uh, a library, uh, a hospital, uh, a university, a community college, a sports arena, 
something that is so tethered to the community that it has no intention of leaving. We are not moving our corporate headquarters to New Jersey. We are the State University of New York. And our commitment to campuses across the state serving their communities is deep and rich and I've actually written about it, I've talked about it. If you don't like Anchor Institution, maybe you'll like Sticky Capital. We are here, we are planted, we are reciprocal in our relationship with you. As SUNY goes, so goes New York. As New York goes, so goes SUNY. And I think the same thing could be said locally. Well, okay, I made it through the interview with Governor Patterson and I'm back to uh, the boardroom of the State University of New York and they are giving me my marching orders. I have had experience at other campuses leading those campuses in a strategic planning process. I know you all do this in your organizations, you know, without a plan, how are you going to know that you're getting there, making progress. Um, I have never done this uh, to a 64 campus system, but I figured, you know, how hard could it be? Well, really hard, really hard. Uh, and then I spoke, uh, perhaps uh, prematurely, that one way to launch any a uh, democratic and inclusive pla uh, planning process would certainly be to hit the road. Had I any idea the breadth, width, length of the state of New York, I probably would not have agreed to do this. But the big trick to it, starting on June 1, don't go to the office. Just get in the car and start driving around the state and uh, we did that. Uh, we actually commenced on exactly June 3rd by going to Cornell, interestingly, because we have four colleges at Cornell that are state-supported uh, and uh, state-operated. And by Labor Day, we had uh, traveled in 95 days to all 64 campuses, uh, something like 7,000 car miles, a few nautical miles because we were also on the maritime training vessel. And through that process collected lots of opinion about what SUNY ought to do, what Clinton is doing, what Plattsburgh is doing, how is this all going to work out, and actually through a sense of repeating the, the, the words and the lessons and the communication we were hearing from the various campuses derived what we thought could be the signature of our strategic plan. And I don't know if you are, a, uh, I'm a make me better reader. I read all the literature on change and organizational development and dieting uh, and you know how to get along with your mother-in-law and all that stuff. And this is, uh, this is Collins. It's not good to grade, it's built to last. And he said every organization of any dy dynamism and future must be driven by a big, hairy, audacious goal. And ours, based on what we were hearing on all the campuses, is that we could be an economic engine for the revitalization of this state and its enhanced quality of life. We called that a working hypothesis. Suppose we got it right after listening to 64 campuses? Well, we weren't sure. So we set out after those campus visits to have conversations all around the state on various topics and that's when we came back to Plattsburgh in February of 09 or 10, I don't know, it's 11 now, so I'm, who's counting? And we derived a set of big ideas, because you know, just to say you're gonna be an economic engine, it's, it's too big, it's, it's everything, uh, it's boiling the ocean, so we thought we should match our capacity as a university system, you know, we're not the government, we're, we're not a state agency, we're a university system to what we know how to do best. We are good at innovation and entrepreneurship. We are good at education. We prepare 5,000 teachers a year. We really are committed to the education pipeline. We are good at energy research and we think we can help New York be uh, smarter, cleaner, and, and we can drive that through our research and our training programs. We have uh, four hospitals, we have optometry, we have dentistry, we train lots and lots of nurses and allied health professions. We probably can help New York be healthier. And of course, we are in uh, every county of the state. We think that our campuses do create vibrancy, uh, which is one of our themes, and uh, 
lest we think of ourselves as only locals and only New Yorkers, we ought to be committed to New York in the world. So that's our story, that's our framework, and that's how we've driven this new strategic plan called the Power of SUNY, which required another statewide tour because we launched this uh, magnificent plan on how we would be an economic driver and create enhanced quality of life for the state by uh, telling our story numerous times. Uh, I often say uh, in the launch of our plan, let's not forget that Nelson Rockefeller really thought this was a way cool idea. He called it his crowning achievement, putting a campus within 30 miles of every New Yorker and knitting together this array of diverse missions from community college to technical college to comprehensive baccalaureate college to research center to medical school. Up and down the line, this is a magnificent, distinctive, only system of its kind in the country. And if Justin Morrill, that's the guy on your right, were alive today pinning the Land Grant Act, he would have chosen SUNY because we are committed to serving our communities, to reaching out, to do the kinds of things that in 1862, the original land-grant university. So I say to my Cornell colleagues, because Cornell is the land-grant institution, uh, imitation, let's see, imitation is the finest form of flattery. So that sort of settles the, any ruffles that might be there. We're, we're not trying to dispute uh, any early designations. We're just trying to say, we like what you do, and we want to do that too. So with 64 campuses and 468,000 students and 3 million alumni and 88,000 faculty members, if we can't be an economic driver for this state, I don't know who can. But of course, we have to get organized, we have to get coordinated, we have to learn how to play well together, and we have to implement our strategic plan. We got a little help on January 5th from our new governor, Andrew Cuomo. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot to make us celebrate. We were a sentence in the State of the State Address. Uh, he said that higher education was going to be a major driver in economic development and that SUNY could be a leader in this initiative. Now, I was trying to uh, restrain myself, but there were people in the balcony who were cheering because this is the kind of recognition we, we think we uh, deserve. We've worked hard to say how we can be an economic driver, and the governor uh, is respecting that and lifting that up. So I thought today, uh, just saying to you from the rhetoric of our strategic plan, yeah, I hear you, but what are we really going to do on the ground. So I have brought to you a half dozen examples of why I believe we can be your economic partner and how this might work. And that isn't to say that we haven't already been a good economic partner, but what we're trying to do is to learn how to work really more collaboratively in partnership with your agenda uh, the local uh, development corporation, the chamber, the elected officials, to see if we can't, uh, as John and I were talking, move the dial. So, uh, for starters, uh, through our SUNY Research Foundation, we have created five on-the-ground tech transfer incubators, one of which will serve the campuses in this region. So we think it's critically important that we get better at entrepreneurship, that we get better at tech transfer and commercializing the bright ideas. And don't, don't uh, be confused here. The only source of bright ideas is not the exclusive purview of our doctoral institutions and medical colleges. Anybody can be an entrepreneur from the youngest, newest student in our family to the uh, senior professor, researcher, scientist at one of our doctoral or medical schools. We want everybody in the bright idea game, and that's why the Research Foundation is lifting up our regional work in tech transfer uh, and investing funds and staff support to help us all be better at what the docs call the bench to the bedside. How fast can we get new knowledge out of our research 
into or at the bedside or into uh, the workforce. Um, we have uh, earlier today had a discussion about this map. Uh, this is the current uh, prevailing regional map for the state of New York. I think it will morph and change as regions speak up about whether this map really represents them. But the important thing about the picture is whatever these regional demarcations turn out to be, given the governor's commitment to regional economic development, look how distributed the SUNY campuses are in these regions. And while I know this region is particularly under consideration, even if it were to stay the same, we are bringing real muscle, capacity, commitment to the region. If it gets redefined, it'll just probably pick up more SUNY institutions. This is the way we have to think about bringing our work together. So while this is an imperfect map, and one that I think the, the governor and the lieutenant governor uh, are still considering, it's really important that eventually this kind of settle down and we start convening uh, together, which I believe is the intended idea of these regional economic development councils. What I want you to know is we're there and we're going to work with you however this map gets drawn. And uh, we are also trying to show, uh, particularly in this region, the importance of small business development corporations and what returns you get on the investment uh, the state investment in those development corporations uh, that are either housed at a SUNY campus or somewhere uh, around your region. Uh, these also include centers of excellence and, and other advanced technology centers that over time the state has created. And our commitment to, if you will, blend the presence of our campuses and however the regions get defined with this notion that we have already some incubated expertise that we hope to bring to bear. And I have to think that what the governor and the lieutenant governor have in mind is that by further collaborating, we can be more powerful, more focused, and more directional. Take a deep breath. Yes, this is the product of some academics. <laughs> Tis true, guilty. But you know what? If you stare at it long enough, it makes a lot of sense. About 15 months ago, thanks to the convening power of IBM, they sat at one table, some of our research universities from SUNY, uh, Syracuse, Cornell, NYU, some of the campuses from CUNY, businesses like IBM, uh, PepsiCo, Pfizer, Corning, uh, others uh, across the state and said, you know what, we've really got to start working more effectively together. And after months of dialogue, something really important emerged. What are the main focal points of our expertise in New York? And they're there in the middle size boxes. I think you all know about nanoscale technology and the work that's being done not only in the Capital District, but in Marcy, which is Utica, Rome, in Rochester, uh, now moving down the Hudson River. So nanotech is something New York knows how to do. In fact, people say we know how to do nanotech better than anybody in the world. Energy. The commitment you are making to wind energy and other alternative energies this is a place where we want you to see yourselves because you have expertise here. I've mentioned healthcare earlier with all the medical healthcare professionals, medical science, the life sciences. We can be a leader in this state if we get our act together. And then finally, informatics, high performance computing, which frankly serves energy and serves medicine. And then, you know, they went a little crazy and started drawing all these other boxes that flow out of the four big boxes. But I want to tell you something, living in Ohio and in Wisconsin, I never saw them do this. I never saw them box and prioritize the real strengths that we have. And we're not going to invent something that we don't already do. Uh, the Hampton Roads area in Virginia is really well known for big simulation programs. Good, great, 
But why would we start from scratch on something we don't do that much of? We should build on our real capacity. So that's part of our plan on how we're going to be an economic engine, by focusing and connecting the dots. Uh, I mentioned uh, nanoscience only to say to you, while it began in Albany, it is quickly spreading throughout the state. And the good news here, and I know John Jablonski knows this, that while there are very high-end scientists working at the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering, they need lab technician training. So our community colleges in the adjacent areas are assisting in training the clean air technicians. And we're pretty confident that the decision of Global Foundries to locate in Saratoga, miles away from this nanoscale science center, and with the full acknowledgement that our community colleges will do some of the training for the 5,000 people they are bringing to Global Foundries, this is a huge stake in the ground. And if I hear anything, it's that New York, New York needs four or five of these distributed across the state. But what I'm proudest of, our campuses are working across the sectors. That's really good news. And this one has particular interest for the North Country because we've done something else that defies gravity. Our four medical schools and our College of Optometry are working together. This is no small matter. Medical schools are very competitive. Uh, they compete for federal dollars. They compete for patients in their hospitals. This group, for now about two years, has been working and planning together how we can together attack disease and cancer and infectious disease and metabolic disorders and cardiovascular disorder. And I think, I hope you feel the presence and intent of upstate medical, which has really adopted the North Country. And so I applaud uh, President David Smith for saying, our reach is way beyond the metropolitan boundaries of Syracuse to an area that needs us most. And, and you're reaping the benefit of that, and it can be part of your entrepreneurship, part of your training, and I'm sure they're already working in that direction. This map also shows you where we're working on the education pipeline, where we're using literacy zones, a couple of which are in the North Country, uh, early college high schools, uh, developing community-based partnerships from cradle to career to make sure we stem the leakage in the education pipeline. We are one of the few spokespersons in the country saying that higher education has an obligation to help our K-12 colleagues and our early childhood educators get the job done. We are not pointing fingers. We prepare the teachers who prepare the kids who ultimately come to college ready or not. I just want to say to you, I think this is fundamentally key to economic development. And I'm very pleased that an hour ago I was meeting with educators on the Plattsburgh campus about this very topic. And of course, there's all the work that's happening here. I just am so excited when John told me about Laurentian and the training you're doing for the 200 technicians uh, for air or for aviation. And as I understand it, other training programs as the total might be something like 900 uh, new employees. I just can't compliment you enough. This is precisely what our conversations about public-private partnerships are all about. And uh, John's sheer enthusiasm about uh, this is just, is just great. And I have to say, in the budget hearings yesterday, uh, I believe, because I think you have a laboratory help me out, John, for wind turbine training that I was here on the day when the lab was created because a week ago you were training something else and you had the agility to train in one direction and then weeks later turn the training to other high need areas. So I just want to say bravo, bravo. And this notion that you were the first and I think yet only associate degree in wind turbine technician training is really marvelous. We know it. We brag about you. And I actually can go on the hustings and say this and string three sentences together when I'm bragging about you. That is really cool. 
And at the same time, the work Plattsburgh is doing as the first and only baccalaureate entrepreneurship program is precisely the model we need for other of our campuses. I cannot compliment you enough, and I want to assure you that your work is recognized and that it fits in to the larger plan. Now, I couldn't help but throw this one in. Again, remember, I'm talking to you about how we're really going to be economic drivers, not just the rhetoric and the 30,000-foot thing. What are we going to do? I think we need more of these. And this is called co-op or cooperative education. It is work-integrated learning. It typically looks like two- and four-year programs where students are actually working in industry, in business, in nonprofit. They're typically paid for their work while they are also earning credit. These are students nationally who graduate on time, typically debt-free because they've been paid and subsidized during their education, are typically offered jobs at the sites where they've done the internship to stay and live and work in New York. This is the remedy to the brain drain and in fact can become the brain gain when we recruit out-of-state students who come and have either a co-op experience or some form of paid internship. We're at SUNY trying to take this idea to scale and give it away to the whole state of New York because, you know, the problem is really good little ideas are hard to take to scale. We have campuses that do this. You probably have some paid interns, John. Plattsburgh probably does, but it's a little bit here and a little bit there. We're trying to organize it. I'm absolutely convinced that this will help retain our young people, your children, your children's children, to live and work in New York. Uh, we're big on photos, you know. This, this wonderful person, the Lieutenant Governor, Duffy um, came to speak to one of our SUNY gatherings about two days after the State of the State Address from Governor Cuomo and had the opportunity to talk to us very explicitly about how SUNY can be such a partner with uh, the Economic Development Council, uh, Adori's uh, leadership in that regard for the State of New York and other chambers and other government organizations to really put our shoulder to the wheel. So I think we have captured some of the attention of the governor and the lieutenant governor as to how in the world these regional economic development efforts are going to work. Of course, first informed by framing the regions, which is still under debate, but how are we collectively going to roll up our sleeves and get this work done? I can tell you, SUNY campuses expect to be at that regional table. We wouldn't uh, be a bit shy about saying we'd love to be co-leading some of these regional campuses and uh, are doing our best to think hard about how that will work in the future. Uh, we're trying to communicate our message. We're big into social media. We are YouTubing and Facebooking and tweeting and it's hard, but we have figured it out. So uh, I want you to know that you can go to our web at any time and find out exactly what we are doing and each of our campuses are featured on our web so you can go right to Clinton Community College from the SUNY website. We are soliciting support from Economic Development Councils across the state for the role SUNY can play. Uh, last year, the New York Economic Development Council, Adori, just stepped right up and gave full endorsement to the, the, uh, po the policy issues that uh, we need to, to uh, help move our agenda. Uh, this year, uh, the storyline will be slightly different, but the need to uh, give SUNY, the, uh, the license to drive this economic agenda is, is very important to us and your support is very important to us. And uh, yesterday we appeared in the budget hearing to uh, ask for regulatory reform around procurements and forming these public-private partnerships uh, and also talk to the legislature about uh, ongoing state support and a five-year tuition policy. So I'm not here today to explain our political agenda, if you will, but only to say that for a great SUNY to be the seed corn for the future of New York, we need to work through an investment plan, and that's what we're talking to the legislature about.
So in some respects, John and uh, Adori, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm here to say that we want to be your partner and we want to help on the ground. And I thank you very, very much. Thank you. Chancellor, if you don't mind, would you entertain a few questions from the audience? Or advice. Advice would be important. Or a, <laughs> or a statement, a short one. Hello. Yes, you are. Well, uh, of course, we're just in the beginning of the budget season. There's a lot to unfold yet, but I, I call it the speed differential. We are going to continue to work as best we can to meet our commitments. Could we go faster? Could we garner more capacity if we had more investment as in SUNY as an engine? Absolutely, yes. We are not stepping away from our commitment. We are engaged in the budget dialogue. We don't, any of us know how this is going to come out uh, as a representative or assembly member Dupree knows, but uh, I think we could, if recognized as a, re a good return on investment, go faster if we weren't, all of us, constantly riddled by these budget reductions. Yes. Well, uh, I think uh, we don't have to guess about that because the accumulated uh, expanse of the cuts to SUNY over the last three years was at about 30 percent. With the additional recommended cuts, it'll be about 35 percent to our operating budget. This causes uh, us to engage in salary freezes, course reductions, program reductions, uh, larger class size, fewer student advisors, and we have experienced all of that already. Uh, the inability, which I think is the, is the greatest challenge for us, the inability to meet demand. The demand at our community college has been, colleges has been extraordinary. You keep stretching, you keep pushing, you keep expanding the number of chairs in the classroom. We've just been trying to accommodate the demand at the same time we've uh, had to tighten our belt. And this has been very controversial. Uh, as we have cut programs or reduced programs, uh, lots of commentary about it, but you know, you have to link the fact that when you cut, you have to, uh, to uh, downsize. And uh, what we're trying to do as well is to be more efficient, to uh, share services, back office services. I'm talking to a lot of business people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're trying to... Uh, meet the demand uh, while uh, tightening our belt considerably. Yes? Hello? As you know, our Chamber of Commerce has done a considerable amount of work uh, on trade between the state of New York and the province of Quebec. I'd like to know what uh, educational partnerships, if any, SUNY has with Quebec and how and if they might be expand, uh, extended in the future. Well, first of all, let me congratulate you on your work and uh, say that I'm probably not the expert on what Plattsburgh and Clinton are doing with uh, Quebec, although I do know that um, there uh, are centers that are working on our relationship with Canada here present today. Where'd you go, my friend? <laughs> I'm giving you a, you know, a plug here. <laughs> Um, I will say, uh, <laughs> since I can't answer the question uh, with informed specificity, one of my early appointments was a Vice Chancellor for Global Affairs. Uh, I brought him here because he knows how to connect with the world. Uh, he, has, uh, he and his team have developed uh, an international data system so that we know where we're working uh, in Canada. and countries around the world. So what I'm going to do is see if that system really works so that I can get your chamber information on where all, this is the idea, where all the SUNY campuses are working uh, in Canada and in Quebec. So uh, that was our thinking. We need to know more about where SUNY is in the world. And it 
may sound obvious to you, but it's really hard to get communication across 64 campuses on 100 different variables and information needs. So creating this UCosmic, it's called information system, uh, is one step in that direction. Hopefully it will help you. That is its intended purpose. Anything else? I think lunch is coming, I know that. So, um, but I welcome uh, one last comment. If not John and uh, Dory, I just wanna thank you for the opportunity to come. It's my privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.